Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Kara al -Nasrawi. You've probably all received many emails from me, but don't know me personally. I'm the Director of Business and Workforce Development. Um, and in addition to that, I have been helping um, the city manage our ARPA funds, the $27 million of American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, through our um, budgetary process, as you know, is uh, in the June months, June and July, um, we passed that we would um, have a million dollars go to support our nonprofit community who's doing a lot of the hard work in this city. And um, you all uh, applied. The program was five times oversubscribed. It was very hard to make choices. I want to thank um, the support I received from uh, Director Pine and the CETO office on this, um, as well as there's some people standing in the back and members of CETO who were on, uh, as well as Councillor Carpenter, who were on our review committee. Um, and we met many times, and it was um, a lot of hard decisions to make so but I'm really happy to be here and celebrate all the work that you guys do and that you guys were able to receive your grants I know um, I said this to a few people who walked in early um, I love to structure these grants and and help get them out the door and then comes the paperwork piece so I know we still have some outstanding pieces of paperwork with all of you and we're getting those checks out the door as soon as we can um, but thank you so much for being here, and I'd like to introduce our mayor. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm really glad we were able to have an event together like this and, and kind of note this pretty significant milestone in uh, for the community for building back from the, the pandemic. Um, I want to thank Cara as well as the committee that helped make these decisions for including Councillor Carpenter for for your work on this. You know, the city, the city has really seen our role as the biggest city in the state um, as uh, this you know, centralized effort. We, we've seen Burlington's role as being one of really trying to help lead not just not just this community but the whole region and really in some ways the state out of this incredibly traumatic challenging period of time that was the pandemic and the, and the year afterward and uh, a principle that we have had both for the way we responded to the virus uh, from very early on to the way that we are trying to lead this recovery is that it need that that we need to be focused as a city on our response on uh, on, on the recovery being equitable. And, uh, you know, that's something that uh, didn't happen everywhere uh, during, during the pandemic. There was great disparities in the public health response, and we saw tremendous disparities in different communities having different health outcomes. We, we also know that on early relief efforts, the money that the federal government was sending out uh, was, was shared in, a, in it, it did not get it out in, a, in an equal way. And we've really been determined as a city to, to try to work against that and make sure that the, the efforts that we were leading um, were equitable. And I do see this program as being one of the uh, main efforts, working with all of you as being one of the main ways that we are, are doing that um, in this point in the recovery. Um, <clears throat> the people you know, in the room include child care, youth service, and elder care organizations includes organizations committed to providing food security and supporting the basic needs of people throughout the community. There are arts and cultural groups here. There are health care providers here. Um, housing and homeless service providers are here. Our focus on homelessness has been really the most significant way we have used the, uh, the ARPA dollars, the federal dollars, and uh, we've been doing that with the city's own efforts with the building of the Elmwood Avenue shelter, but it's also reflected in uh, some of the awards that um, have been done through this program. There are organizations here who expand our sense of belonging and safety for LGBTQ, BIPOC, and immigrant neighborhood neighbors. And there are partners here in the room who are real leaders in our collective fight against the opioid crisis, which is uh, a public health challenge that 
predated the pandemic and has worsened dramatically um, since, since 2020 and uh, continues to be a source of tremendous heartbreak. <clears throat> the work that you um, all do in our community to support people, families, and industries most impacted by the pandemic is critical. Our hope is that with these federal dollars, that work can be advanced and expanded in a way that relieves the lingering challenges of the pandemic and accelerates a just recovery for Burlington and Vermont. You know, we know we haven't been able to provide all the resources you need to, to meet that challenge, but we hope uh, with these grants, it's, it's a meaningful step forward. So that's really it. We wanted to have this moment to, to say thank you for your leadership, for your commitment to the city, for your commitment to Vermont, and for your collaborative innovative and caring spirit spirit in the face of the challenges we've been through and, and everything that's still ahead. And um, we hope you'll hang out for a few minutes, enjoy some coffee and desserts if you haven't yet, and uh, maybe meet some new colleagues. So thank you all for being here. Hi, I'm Tom Dalton. And I'm Jess Kirby. And we're from Vermonters for Criminal Justice Reform. And last year, we opened a specialized reentry and recovery center for justice-involved people living with substance use disorder in downtown Burlington. And Jess, do you want to talk a little bit about the services we have there? Uh, sure. We offer uh, reentry services to people re recently leaving incarceration. We have recovery supports and peer supports, uh, case management. We have a contingency management program, so a lot of just direct services for justice involved people. And we are currently working with over 120 people. You know well, more about that. <laughs> so the city of Burlington has been our, our biggest supporter in getting this reentry and recovery center up and running, both financially but also just in uh, terms of um, you know, helping us get the resources from a variety of different grant funders. And um, Mayor Weinberger in particular has been a real champion for us. And today we're here for a reception um, for ARPA grant recipients uh, for, for nonprofit organizations, and we were lucky enough to be a recipient of one of those grants. Uh, we're really excited to be here today and really grateful for the support that the City of Burlington has given us. Um, we have seen a rise in overdose deaths in Burlington and in Chinna County and in Vermont, and one of our main goals is to help reduce overdose deaths of justice-involved people um, and reduce overdose deaths in our community. And this, this, these funds have really allowed us to kind of expand services in Burlington, expand access to innovative services, <clears throat> really expand access to direct services for people that are very high risk for overdose. And the funds that we've received have really helped us to be able to make our, you know, this program a reality and to be able to help some of the most vulnerable people in our community. So we're really grateful and happy to be here. I'm Kim Anderson. I'm the Director of Development for the Community Health Centers. And today we are really lucky to be accepting a grant award uh, to help fund a nurse position within our homeless health care program. Uh, the nurse in this program uh, goes uh, to many different outreach areas throughout the city to help with wound care and to help with vaccination, to help be that bridge to many other different social services that probably got a lot of good grant money today as well. So I think trying to help improve the health with all of all within our community is that's our mission. Um, and it's really nice to have the city support that and, and increase our partnership in this sort of way. Hi, I'm Dave Mullen with Green Mountain Habitat for Humanity, and we are very pleased to be here today. As part of this award, Green Mountain Habitat is going to be able to build more affordable housing, more home ownership in the city of Burlington. We are extremely grateful for this opportunity to put this money to work in perpetually affordable housing. I'm Sarah Carpenter, city councilor from the New North End of Burlington. And I'm here with my colleague, Andrea Vietz, who's executive director of the Heineberg Senior Center, who just received an award. And Andrea can tell you about the center and Great. the award. Thank you, Sarah. Um, the Senior Center serves over 500 people a year, um, both from the new north end of Burlington, but also from all around Chittenden County. And with the ARPA funding that we were awarded from the city, 
we are developing a free lunch project. So we will be offering free meals to seniors uh, three to four days a week and up to 30 people a day. And um, we're so appreciative to the city. Um, this money also has allowed us to reach out and get funding from some other grantors as well, which has really allowed us to move forward with this project. Thank you. Thank you, and, and just to put in the plug, the center has lots of other activities, other food activities and social activities and health activities, so yes. come on by. Yeah, absolutely. Um, bone builders, yoga, line dancing, bingo, bridge, mahjong, there's a peer support group, um, all kinds of things happening, and we've been doing lots of special events lately. You can check out our homepage for a list of those events. Hi, I'm representing Feeding Chittenden. We received funding through the ARPA grant that will go towards creating a safe and welcoming space at the food shelf in Burlington's Old North End and the Community Resource Center that accompanies our food shelf. So together we will support folks in need with food, community, and opportunity. Brian Pine, I work at CEDO as the director and I served on the committee that reviewed the proposals that uh, came in. We obviously had five times the dollars requested that we had available. A lot of important work happening uh, across the community to ensure that the uh, recovery from the pandemic is um, both just and uh, equitable. And organizations that were supported were um, put together the strongest proposals that looked like they would have the best chances of succeeding and having an impact um, on folks who were hit hard by the pandemic, and I'm optimistic that these resources will make a, a difference in our community. And I uh, just want to also encourage the organizations that uh, submitted proposals but didn't get chosen um, to keep up their grid work, and hopefully it will be uh, opportunities for them in the future. My name's Becca McHale. I'm the executive director of One Arts, Inc. And I'm Margaret Coleman. I'm the board president of One Arts. And we provide arts-based childcare. Um, we have three locations, and we received a $10,000 grant from the city that we're using to help cover co-pays for our families who struggle to pay for tuition for their childcare. And we've also um, we're also using it for uh, supplies for lunch to provide lunches. We make lunch for all of our children, and um, as well as. Um, other supplies like sun hats or sunscreen, um, anything that our families uh, can't provide themselves, we're, we're using this grant money to support them. So we're really grateful to the city of Burlington for this extra assistance and um, just giving us a little bit of um, support for this early learning center and um, helping making, make it a little more possible for um, access to childcare. The funding that we just received from the city is really vital for this particular program. It's going to help us get food to some of the immigrant and BIPOC communities of seniors in the city. The program's through HANDS and the name of this particular program is called Diverse Pantry and that's going to get food to seniors in the immigrant and BIPOC communities and it's been absolutely vital funding for us to be able to move forward. So we're, we really appreciate this funding.